All right, back at it again. Shout out to everyone that left a comment on this boat. I asked for suggestions and you guys delivered. I won't be able to incorporate everything that you guys suggested, obviously, but trust me, I did consider a lot of suggestions, really good stuff. So stay tuned to see what suggestions actually made it into this boat build. Super excited to get the painting done and actually get this build going. It's, it's crazy how many hours I've already put into this and I haven't done any framing. I haven't done any of the actual build out. It's still a bare open boat right now, but it's time and we're gonna fast track and get this thing done. Happy to have you guys along the way. If you haven't subscribed yet, be a part of this boat build from start to finish and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any updates. Now to secure the subfloor to this boat will be a little bit different than previous builds. Reason being that if you notice, the rib of this boat is very narrow. It comes up to a narrow point. So it doesn't leave much surface for you to drill down into to secure your flooring. And that is different. It's the first time I've encountered this so far. On my other bills, it comes up and it has a flat top surface so you can drill and secure right into the rib of the boat. To solve for that, I'm gonna use one inch tubing. And this is a technique that I saw on Anthony Jones's channel. Shout out to TB Nation Outdoors and the build they did with Anthony Jones. They showed a quick technique that they did and I said, man, that's gonna work perfect for this build. I'm gonna use one inch tubing and then put my pink foam sheet in between it and then I'll be able to secure my deck down to the tubing and not these skinny little ribs right here on the boat. You guys were about to see how all that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and get started, get this subfloor in. To not bore you, I'm gonna skip all the individual cuts to the aluminum and the foam sheeting. I've done a full video on the channel showing you exactly how to apply foam to your subfloor. Link at the top of the screen. All right, I've got all the aluminum square tubing cut and put in place and just mocked it up. This is how it's gonna look. Got the one inch tube, and this is really lightweight stuff, guys. One sixteenth inch thick, one by one. Very lightweight. So I'm not adding a lot of weight at the same time, basically creating my own ribs of the boat for me to secure the subfloor to. One of the things you wanna think about is what's gonna secure it down, okay? Because I'm gonna put a subfloor here, but well, what's gonna be the additional support because these tools will be glued in. And what I mean by that is, even though it's gonna be glued in, there's gonna be framing on top, flowing on top, that's gonna ultimately secure it down even more. Back here, I'll have two hatches. It's gonna be secured down by the actual framing of the boat, which will connect to the side rail. So you guys will see, it's one big puzzle that's gonna come together in the end and be one secure structure for the boat. Very, very satisfied of how this is coming out so far. Just wanted to pause right here and give you guys a look into it. So what I'm going with is Gorilla Glue heavy duty construction adhesive. I'm applying this to both the foam and the tubing. There you have it, pretty easy to do, very quick, took no time at all, went on very smooth. That construction adhesive is very strong. It takes 24 hours to cure. I'll probably put some weight on this overnight just to keep it down secure, because you wanna make sure as much of this stuff has contact to the hull of the boat as much as possible to have the best bond. So this is gonna work out great. You can look at the surface difference. I've got an inch flat surface to be able to rivet the flooring down or any framing I may need to because these ribs are very narrow and will not work for this application. So this is an absolute awesome solution if you're having this issue with your boat, the type of John boat you have with very narrow skinny ribs, go ahead and use some one inch by one sixteenth inch thick aluminum tubing and get the job done. One week later. So I've got all the foam in for the main areas of the boat. I just finished putting in these pieces right here. What I'm loving right now is how well this thing is in here. All of these pieces are in. I'm literally pulling on it to move it. You can see some of it where it oozed out right here. I'm trying to lift it up and it does not move. And of course, like I mentioned before, Whatever framing I do will help to hold everything down as well. So everything will be super secure. So this is a really cool way to create your own ribs on the boat when your ribs are very narrow and you won't be able to really use them to secure the subfloor or anything else down. You've got a lot more surface using these one inch 
aluminum square tubing. One additional thing I wanna mention is be selective in where you put your tubing. You don't have to put two pieces of tubing in between each rib. If you notice, I have two pieces here, two pieces here in between the ribs. But if you notice here, I've only got one piece of aluminum and no tubing on this side. And that's just strategic based on the end result. Again, all of this is a puzzle. So what you're doing in the beginning will affect what you do near the end. So when I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do the cockpit floor, I realize I don't need a piece of tubing here because I'll be securing the floor of the boat using this piece of tube and the, definitely this end piece right here. So what I'm thinking here is I don't need an extra piece here. It's extra material, it's extra cost, and more importantly, extra weight in the boat. You don't wanna add unnecessary weight. So what I'm saying is figure out how many pieces you need and only go with what you absolutely need to get the job done. At this point, I'm ready to put my subfloor in, so that's what we're gonna do next. So right here, I'm using construction paper to create the cutout for the aluminum sheeting that will be used as the subfloor underneath the front deck. The paper is very flexible. I've used cardboard in the past that's not as flexible and takes a little bit more time and effort to do this with cardboard. So this construction paper works out really good. The other good thing about using paper is areas that you may have made your initial cut wrong, you can correct it by adding more paper. Just use some box tape to hold it in place and pretty much put a band-aid on the template and fix it so that it's a perfect cut. All right, from here, I'm gonna take this over to the aluminum sheeting. First, you wanna lay it down on the sheeting, tape it down so you can hold it in place. Trace everything out, take your time, make sure that paper stays flat. And before removing the paper, I took the time to mark where each rib is underneath the sheeting because I won't be able to see that once I lay this down. I marked out exactly where the ribs are for me to secure the subfloor to the ribs of the boat. To make this cut, I'm actually using a tool I haven't used before. I'm cutting the sheeting with some cut metal cutting shears. Cuts right through the aluminum really quick. And this is for efficiency. You can use many different things to cut this, but for efficiency, I went with this shear, which worked out really well. I am super excited right now. This is actually the first time my initial cut is a perfect fit. Now, when I say perfect, I mean, I don't have to do any major cuts to make to be able to install this. I do have one little piece to notch out right here. So this is working out really well. I did scuff up my bench a little bit, so I'll need to do a little bit of touch up paint after all that work painting this boat, but a little scrape here and here but that's minor, I got extra paint, I can do that. I've got my tubing rib right underneath, which I'll secure this piece here, secure here, 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 and at the top. That will secure the floor down completely, it will not budge. Got it all riveted down. I was able to hit the ribs, so my markings worked. I just realized I still have one more to do, so I'll get that one in, but I was able to rivet everything in. It is super secure and it's down solid. This floor is not moving. Not done yet, gonna drop some foam on here and get back to you guys. Foaming the John Boat floor is really not a part of creating ribs and securing your John Boat subfloor, but I'm showing it to you anyway for entertainment value and also to show you how clean this looks in the end. I figure I recorded it, might as well show you everything. For this, I used some pretty inexpensive EVA foam from Amazon. My goal was to install this using the least amount of cuts. So I used the same template I used to measure and cut the aluminum sheet. In the end, I only made three cuts and got it all installed. With this EVA foam, it comes with an adhesive back, already applied to the foam, which made it a lot easier to apply. So I carefully peeled off the backing and laid it down. I really like this foam. I've used it before, it turned out really good on another build. So I decided to use it again, change up the color and go with something that really goes well with this boat. I like this so much, who knows, maybe someday I might just do an entire boat with this stuff. In the end, I loved how the subfloor turned out. It's solid and very secure in the boat. It's a pretty simple project, but I definitely wanted to share it as a solution for others out there that might be 
be faced with the same exact situation where the ribs of your boat are just too narrow to drill into and secure your subfloor. Guys, I do apologize for the delay on the conversion of this boat. It's been a slow roll. A lot of things have been happening, but no excuse. And trust me, I've ramped up and gotten a lot done and it's coming to the channel very soon. In the next video, I'm gonna show exactly how I gutted out the middle bench in preparation of it being a hatch for all the batteries for the boat. I'm putting two batteries in this boat, one for the trolling motor and one for the electronics. And I'll also be installing the onboard charger in this bench as well. So I wanna show you a quick and easy way to gut your bench and prepare it for a hatch because hatch storage is very important. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so you're aware of all the uploads for this build. Check out the other builds I've done. I'll leave links in the description below to those as well. So